In this lesson we will discuss operational amplifiers. The most common type of linear IC is a specialized type of amplifier called the operational amplifier or op amp. Operational amplifiers were originally designed to perform various mathematical operations such as addition, subtraction, integration, and differentiation. In a way, an op amp is a simple, non-programmable analog computer. A modern op amp available in an inexpensive and convenient form can cost less than a dollar to a few dollars and fits conveniently on a person's thumb. The standard for an op amp is the classic 741 chip. Most other op amp ICs are designed to be pin for pin compatible with the 741. That is, the same function is served by each pin on both the 741 and other op amp chips. Op amp ICs are available in a variety of packaging styles. The 8 pin dip housing shown in this figure is probably the most widely used. Sometimes a 14 pin dual inline package is used as shown. Some op amp ICs are available in an 8 pin round can arrangement. The symbol for an op amp is illustrated. The input terminal designated minus is known as the inverting input. Any signal applied to this input will have its polarity reversed or inverted at the output. An AC input signal will be phase shifted by 180 degrees. The input terminal designated plus is known as the non-inverting input, that is, if the input signal is positive, the output signal will also be positive. The ideal op amp has an extremely high, ideally infinite, voltage gain. For a 741 op amp, the open loop gain is 200,000. The open circuit input impedance is infinite, and thus it does not load the driving source. Also, it has a zero output impedance. The representation of an ideal op amp is now shown. Practically, however, output impedance can be characterized as very high and input impedance as very low. We'll now discuss the differential amplifier. With the two opposing inputs, inverting and non-inverting, an op amp is known technically as a differential amplifier. The output is equal to the inverting input voltage minus the non-inverting input multiplied by the amplifier's gain. The differential amplifier consists of two bipolar junction transistors connected into biasing circuitry. The amplifier's two input terminals are associated with the base terminals of the two transistors, while the output terminals are situated at the two collector terminals, between which the load is connected. Hence, each transistor has been arranged in the common emitter format, which allows the amplifier to provide large gain characteristics. The emitter currents of both transistors pass through a single emitter resistor, thus providing both transistors with the same emitter voltage. In this mode of operation with a single input, input 2 is grounded and the single voltage is applied to input 1. An inverted amplified signal appears at output 1. Also, a signal voltage in phase appears at the emitter of Q1. Since both Q1 and Q2 have common emitters, the emitter signal becomes an input to Q2, which functions as a common base amplifier. Q2 amplifies the signal which appears non-inverted at output 2. We will now discuss response to two differential inputs or double-ended inputs. In this mode of operation, two out-of-phase opposite polarity signals are applied to the inputs. Both sources provide opposite polarities at all times, characteristic of a 180 degrees phase difference. Considering the effects of source 1 connected to Q1, we find that it provides a positive alternation. Q1, operating common emitter, will provide a negative alternation at its collector. Q2, operating common base, will provide a positive alternation at its collector. Considering the effects of source 2 connected to Q2, we find that it provides a negative alternation 180 degrees out of phase with the source Q1. Q2 will respond to this source as a common emitter, providing a positive alternation at its collector. Q1 will respond to this source as a common base, providing a negative alternation at its collector. Both sources drive Q1's collector lower and at the same time Q2's collector higher. Each source would cause these effects alone. Since both would cause the same variation, the total output variation would be twice the amplitude caused by each source alone. The measure of an amplifier's ability to reject common mode signals is a parameter called the common mode rejection ratio, or CMRR. Considering two inputs which are equal in amplitude and in phase with each other, a positive alternation at the base of Q1 will cause a negative alternation at Q1's collector and a positive alternation at Q2's collector. If we combine both results, Q1's collector is being pulled lower by its own input while simultaneously being pulled higher by Q2's input. 
If the sources are equal in amplitude, the two opposing forces will balance each other so that they cancel. This implies that the collectors will not change voltage at all. In reality, there may be some variation, but both in the same direction. This mode of operation is called common mode operation. Common mode rejection ratio, or CMRR, is found by using the ratio of the differential voltage gain, delta V D, to the common mode gain, delta C M. Thus, CMRR is equal to delta V D divided by delta C M. The higher the CMRR, the better. The CMRR is often expressed in decibels as 20 log of delta V D divided by delta C M. Let's look at an example. A certain differential amplifier has a differential voltage gain of 3000 and a common mode gain of 0 0.3. Determine the CMRR and express it in dB. CMRR is equal to 3000 over 0 0.3 or 10,000. Expressed in dB, CMRR is equal to 20 log of 10,000 or 80 dB. A CMRR of 10,000 means that the differential input signal is amplified 10,000 times more than the unwanted noise, the common mode. 